Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Heal My Tajweed, helping you read. Alhamdulillah, this is now day two of uh, our course, and last time we met brothers Arshad and brother um, Abdul Rahman. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Right, so this is their second session with me. Actually, this is their third session with me. Our last session was a bit unplanned, so we did not rec we did record it, but I did not upload it. But we covered. Uh, three etiquettes of reciting the Quran which we're going to share with you today but I'm going to do this slightly differently the whole philosophy of Hilmai Tajweed is to teach someone to a level good enough so they can teach someone else without waiting for them to be completely proficient in everything what I mean is uh, we're going to take one Tajweed rule at a time or one etiquette at a time or one Surah at a time but we're going to make sure we teach them those points good enough which is going to be free of mistakes so they can teach someone else they don't need to it in fact this is a method i recommend to everyone to make you better learners teach as you're learning because you will learn faster you will learn better it will stay in your head inshallah for a lot longer period and if you doubt this method then stay with us on our journey and i'm going to show you that you are wrong inshallah uh, in fact i've taught this even with children uh, they you pick up a lot faster and for children if you give them this responsibility they kind of feel you know uh, empowered and happy they love teaching others helping others okay okay right so for today we have covered three points number one was the types of mistakes when reciting quran number two the ruling about when to say the isti'adha which means and number three there are different ways of reciting the Qur'an to join the isti'adha, the basmallah, and the first line of a surah. And there's uh, also four ways to join two surahs when we continue reading. And there's one way which is not permissible, and we're going to talk about this today, inshallah. But instead of me teaching on camera, the brothers are going to teach me, and uh, so I make sure they know it today, so they can go and teach someone else, inshallah. Okay? So... Brother uh, Arshad, you're going to start with you, inshallah. inshallah. So you're going to tell us about what you've learned today, the types of mistakes yeah. in the Quran. Yeah. Two types of mistakes. Uh, one is major mistake. Uh, second is going to be uh, minor mistakes. Obviously, uh, major mistakes uh, is d depend on, on the, t uh, the way how uh, somebody makes a mistake. Like, is it uh, purposefully or uh, non-purposefully? If it is non-purposeful, obviously, it may not be a, a, a sin. Um, so coming to a major mistake, uh, first one is going to be the ch changing of vowel. Uh, so uh, example, it's changing of a vowel. Vowel, yeah. Okay. So uh, in place of dhamma, if you are saying fataha, obviously it change the meaning. So it's going to be a major mistake. Example, uh, dawudu. If you are saying dawuda, it's going to be a major mistake. Uh, second one is going to be um, changing the vowel um, short to long. Or kitaba, we are saying kitaba. That's going to be changing the uh, meaning out of it. So that will be a major mistake. What about if you go from kitaba to kitaba? Even that is also going to be the same. So okay. vice versa, it's going to be the major mistake. Uh, also, the third one is going to be uh, changing origin of the word. The ma main example is uh, kalb and qalb. Is kalb is a, um, dog. a dog, and uh, qalb is going to be a heart. Um, that's about uh, major mistakes. So from you mean from calf to calf? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm going to be talking about the minor mistakes. Um, the first one I'm going to talk about is the change in sifa. For example, its elevation. Um, uh, one of the examples I can give is about the letter noon. Um, so if the letter noon, if you was to say na instead of na, then this will be incorrect. Uh, but it will be considered as a minor mistake. The second one is. The change, the uh, changing the number of beads of the med. Um, so changing from two beads uh, and making it longer. For example, two beads to four beads and etc. Uh, or going back from the f uh, f four or five beads back to two beads. Uh, for example, qala and making it qala. This is this will be considered as a minor mistake. The next minor mistake is changing in its uh, the tajweed, some of the tajweed rules. Uh, for example. Um, the Noon Shadda in uh, the first ayah of Surah An-Nas has uh, two beads. Uh, for example, 
قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ This, um, but saying it as قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ This will be considered as a minor mistake. So Alhamdulillah, yes, just to summarize, there are two main types of mistakes when reciting the Qur'an and major mistakes, minor mistakes. Major mistakes is anything which changes the meaning and you are sinful if you are doing this deliberately. You are also going to be sinful if you did not know about it, you are told, but now you persist and you do not want to go and learn to rectify it. Right? Now, when it comes to minor mistakes, some scholars say it is not a sin, some scholars say it is a sin, it becomes a sin if there's enough minor mistakes, especially if you're told and you don't, again, go and uh, rectify it. And Allah knows best. The advice would be, this is the Qur'an and this is the Kalamullah, so it should be recited in the best way possible. So whether it's major mistakes or minor mistakes, take both as mistakes which you need to rectify, inshallah. And this is why we're trying to do courses like this. Uh, I'm, I'm going to speak about um, the ruling of isti'adha. Whenever you start reciting Quran, you should start with A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem. Along with that, if you are in the topic of Quran after starting, then you no need to say isti'adha again once more if you are going switching from one surah to other surah. And in case if you are going out of the topic, that is out of Quran, suppose you are answering to somebody else or getting a tea or something answering to any family members that means actually you are going out of the Quran context then again when you start back from Quran back to Quran then obviously you need to say isti'adha that is about the ruling of isti'adha what if the you know we stop to talk about tafsir of the Quran or a different tajweed rule do we have to say isti'adha again no not required because you are still in the context of Quran so overall if you are in the context of Quran then you no need to say repeat uh, uh, okay. uh, uh, regarding basmala if you are on that particular surah and you are changing to a different surah then you need to say bismillah at the beginning of every surah, every surah is yeah. recommended yes it okay. is recommended <clears throat> yeah what about if you're starting from the middle of a surah is there a difference of opinion on, yes, on the bismillah in, in this context there is different of opinions okay uh, for a safer side it has been recommended that if you are Changing from one surah to the other surah, it has been recommended to say Bismillah. So I'm going to be talking about the four ways um, to start the Quran by uh, and joining uh, other surahs, and the one way which is not permissible uh, to start the Quran or even join with uh, another surah. Um, the first way is saying the uh, istiada, stopping the Bismillah, stopping, and then the first ayah stopping. So this would be A'udhu Billahi min Shaitanir Rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. That's the first way. The second way is um, joining all three. So um, saying the um, saying the istiada, and then joining it with the Bismillah, and then joining it with the first ayah. So this would be A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitanir Rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. The third way is uh, saying the isti'adha um, and joining it with the basmala, but then after the basmala you stop and you read the uh, first ayah. So this would be A'udhu Billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. The fourth way is saying the isti'adha, stopping and then joining the basmala with the first ayah. So this would be A'udhu Billahi Min Ash-Shaytanir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen So now I'm going to be talking about the one way which is not permissible for connecting two surahs um, The example of this would be connecting the last ayah of Surah Fatiha with um, the next with, with another surah So for example Sirat al Ladina an Amta Alehim Rayr il Magdubi Alehim Walatolina Bismillah il Rahman il Rahim Alif la Mim. So this is not permissible, making the Bismillah the last part of um, the Surah and trying to then connect it with the next Surah. This is not permissible. Uh, so Alhamdulillah, this was uh, like a pilot scheme of me trying to teach these brothers and by uh, the same token, it's going to be anyone who wants to come and learn with us. I want to teach something 
and make sure they understand it. And the only way for me to know you understand something if you can teach it back to me or back to someone else, which I advise brothers and sisters to do. However, this is kind of a new territory for myself, uh, how we're going to present this course. So I thought I'd get these brothers and actually put them on the spot today. They're not used to being on the camera. and But I think it's going to be a bit inspirational for anyone out there. And uh, let's see what the brothers think. Uh, start with you, Brother Abdul Rahman. I put it on the spot today and you were quite nervous uh, in front of the camera. But do you want to talk about the camera part or the fact that I'm making you think about what you're learning? So I'll talk about both. Firstly, I'm not really, I'm a bit... Because they're camera shy, no. I don't really uh, come to the camera a lot, probably very rarely. Uh, with regards to the whole um, the whole system of... Let's, let's have a conversation, yeah. Okay, just okay, just keep, okay. it, keep it simple. Okay, okay. So just talk to me. Okay, so with, with regards to the whole system no, of... No, no, talk to me, talk to okay. me. Like, look at me, talk okay. to me, talk okay, to me. Okay, okay. Yeah? So with regards to like the, the way we're doing it now in terms of the teaching, I think it's really good because now that I've learned it and I've taught it back to you, I'm able to like go teach someone else. So I can go home, teach someone at home, uh, teach my little brothers, sisters, yeah. just that little, the basic part that we've just covered. You feel confident? Uh, I feel confident. I feel yeah. confident. Um, I feel very confident um, because I had to, you know, I had to understand it first. And now to teach it to some, to teach it to you first, True. if I'm able to teach it to you and you've understood it, I'm able to teach it to yeah. someone else. So more importantly, I'm confident in myself. Yeah. Yeah. And Obviously, because hopefully you're going to have this video online as well yeah. for you to refer back yeah, to. Yeah. So you can double check whether you made yes, a mistake. Yes. And then you can always contact me to ask, you know, uh, yeah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, so would you want to kind of study this way? To be honest, I'm, I'm happy, you're uh, happy the way we're doing it now. Yeah, I'm happy okay. the way we're doing it Would you recommend right it for the people? I would definitely recommend it for the people. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Okay. okay. So Brother Arshad, I've also put you on the spot. You, you're less camera shy than Brother Rahman, but what do you make of this method, this approach? Uh, the approach is very good actually because uh, if you are uh, able to explain somebody else, especially the teacher, that means actually you should be more known about the topic and you should be able to understand very well. Then only we'll be able to explain it to somebody else. So in that way, uh, we, we, I'm quite confident and also I feel like um, uh, if there is a mistake, then you have opportunity, somebody else, uh, the teacher can teach me back. So it makes sort of a revision for me. Yeah. So that way, I'm, mashallah, I'm getting benefited. Alhamdulillah. Okay. So inshallah, we are going to try to keep this method as much as possible. Uh, maybe some topics will not be possible, but as much as I can, uh, I'm going to be teaching anyone, sometimes off camera, but on camera, they're going to be trying teaching that back to me. And that's going to be the lesson. And I'm hoping this is going to work out for you. If you find that there's something not clear, obviously get in touch with me and we'll revise this whole method and you can ask me questions. And there's some kids playing football outside, so it's a bit noisy. Apologize about this. Okay, uh, just to announce to you that inshallah, I've uh, put a couple of uh, posters for this course and we are still going to try and reach other massages to try and give a taste of course of Surah Al-Fatiha. We've decided to condense the four days that we did in IDC and to focus on Surah Al-Fatiha. So we're going to go present this test of course to any masjid who will have us inshallah. So going forward with this project, if you have any uh, special skills in content creation, in you know um, social media or website designing, website maintenance, or if you want to help in any way, shape or form in this project, please get in touch with myself. The details are in the description below and at the end in my end slate. And also, we are trying to do this feasibility when we go present the test of course. So any donation you want to contribute to us, there's a link for a PayPal link, which is uh, paypal.me forward slash heal my tajweed. Anything you donate is going to be considered as a qajariya as long as we teach other people and they benefit, they themselves teach others, inshallah. So jazakallah khairan for staying till now. And you know what to do down below. Give me a like, uh, leave me a comment, share and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so yet. As always, this was Ash from Hilmai Tajweed helping you read. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.